social media. We got to make sure that we check in, we show love. And with that, we also got to eat our food. We come in at a party. That's what we do. 100%. So with the good food, what is, if you have to put on the top of the list, Spanish food, if you, if you out there and, and there's a Spanish truck or the restaurant around the way or even Familia's house, what is the one thing you know you got to have in the crib right, that you got to eat? That's such a hard question. Man. I was just watching um because I was watching this thing on, on Facebook and home and there's um a people that's in the Bronx that he makes the uh -huh. lechon. And I was like, Bob I haven't said I had a good lechon in such a long time, yo. And that's it made yeah. me think. Uh -huh. I'm also I'm I'm very well versed in making my own penit tambien, so I'm uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> that's what is that man. I mean like now that you put up penit, man, that, that might have to be it, but Something like that I've been wanting for a minute <clears throat> that my mom has made in a minute is uh, bacalaito. Ooh. I love that. Man. Ooh. My mother used to make that shit solid too, tambien. She was, yeah. she was very she was very keen on making that. She has to, she has to trickle down and, and, and show me the recipe on how to get that. Because it, I don't know, there's some way that, that mamas and grandma do it that they just put like that. There's a little extra on it. Uh-huh. It's something that uh you, you can't teach. It's just something they got. And, and 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 no matter what I do, no matter what they say, they always tell me, nah, you 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 cook you cook like well, like you gotta go and I'm like, nah, there's something there's something missing to this. We gotta put something yeah. else on it. So I, I completely agree. <laughs> but you being on the road and all that, like you you they, they, you don't get to see a lot of Spanish food like that, man. You be everywhere and like I, I know it must be tough going from town to town and you know, you don't get to see good cooking like that. I mean, yeah, we, we definitely get a get a chance every now and then when we're on the road. I mean, there's amazing restaurants on the road. Like, Texas has some of the best tacos I've ever had. Uh, Tijuana has amazing, obviously, tacos with Mexican food and ceviche. Uh, we, we, we're pretty fortunate that we, we get to eat at a different place. I'm trust you with this stuff. Well, it's I good. mean, it can be a lot of gas station at times, you know what I mean, and subways and shit like that. But do you, we, you, we, you get, we get some good food every now and then. Do you find your way bumping into the breakfast burrito whenever you get the chance? <laughs> it has to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, I'm more. I like a uh, sunny side up eggs, side of uh, you know potatoes, some turkey bacon. That's my go-to breakfast. I'm kind of boring when it comes to breakfast. You, yeah, because, you know, we got to keep that svelte physique that we've been keeping together for such a long time because we already know, although Santana might be a little bit, you know, f built up here, you are the man that everybody looks to for the body. Come on, let's get to this. Let's be real. Santana's all genetics, man. He can eat whatever he wants, and he just has a six-pack. Santana looks like he's been playing handball since he was three years old. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> he's got that handball nah, he, frame. He, and he don't you don't play handball at all. I really? I'm pretty terrible at it. Yeah, yeah. Are I'm you the handball are, person? Are you the handball guy? I mean, I've dabbled. I definitely played in high school, but I haven't played in forever. I, I I was never like the huge uh handball kid. I was more into baseball. And uh yeah, baseball was my thing when I was younger. How Spa how Spanish are we? That the, especially the the thing that comes out is baseball. What was your position? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was on uh, third base and left field. Okay. I used to play those two games. Okay, you got the hot corner there. All right. Play the yeah, yeah. You got to get that glove I, I, out there, man. <laughs> I had a little spring in my step, in my step when I was younger. Just a little. Uh, yeah, see, oh, 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 like, yeah, like if you lost it anytime soon. Please. Let me see. The stuff, the stuff that you've been doing. Let me tell you something. I remember watching you guys years ago. Maybe I'm going to say almost 10, about 9. About nine years ago, and you guys, when you guys were coming out of Lotus, and there was a buzz with you guys with the whole with the whole team Pazuzu and everything, and I was like, "Shit!" I said, "These, these I said, these guys, they, you know, there there is some promise coming out of New York again." Shit. <laughs> um, how was it that you guys actually transitioned? Because from what I remember, from what I hear, you guys didn't start off as a tag team. Uh no, nah, we um. We, we trained separately. Like, we knew each other because of uh, backyard wrestling, actually. We used to uh, uh, wrestle for the same people when we did backyard. So we knew each other when we were kids. But then we went to both separately get trained. He got trained in Staten Island. I got trained in Long Island. And then um, since we knew each other, we had met up at a show. We were probably a couple of years into our training at this point. 
maybe like two years, two and a half years, three years, him maybe a little longer. But um, we met at this random show and then we started talking and he needed a, a job, like a, you know, a shoe job. And um, I was just like, yo, they're hiring at my, my, uh, my job. I, I recommended him and he got the job. And then all we did was talk about wrestling 24 seven. And then, you know, we, we shot the idea of becoming a tag team. And then the Ludus opened up, and then we went there, and then, yeah, the rest is history, man. I mean, it, it's funny because you you, you kind of look at the, the the personalities of you two. You, you're, and when everybody looks out, he seems to be the more aggressive, staunch, straightforward type. You're the jovial, fun guy. But when you get into the ring, business is business. Is it, is it still the same outside the ring? Are you guys, like, the same personalities going in? Because sometimes – when you look at Santana, he's very um. He looks as though he's not approachable. <laughs> he just looks like he's like, leave me the fuck alone, guys. I mean, that's just like him being a New Yorker. You know what I mean? You kind of walk around with that "don't talk to me" face because you don't want people to bother you. And uh, yeah, he just carries that on every. That he has a standing bitch face, as <laughs> they say, a resting bitch face. That's, 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 that's <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, um, a hundred percent. I mean, he's. He's a pretty easygoing guy. I mean, once you talk to him, uh, he's pretty chill. It's just, yeah, he definitely has that non approachable face. But, uh, I mean, the characters that you see in the ring is pretty much us just turned up to 100%. You know what I mean? Volume maxed out. I can only imagine that's what you were like in high school, though. Like, you were the class clown, the the, the fucking yeah. the motherfucker who yeah, did front flips in the, in, fucking, in the hallway and shit. 100%. I used to wrestle in the hallways, me and my boys. We used to just like jump each other, because you know, um, uh, what was it? Uh, um, the attitude was on and popping when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, me and my boys would run through the hallways, and then we would just like act like DX members or some shit like that, and then like jump each other, just do a DDT to each other, and then run away to our next class. Man, that shit was it's fun. That's kind of where it started, you know, that love of wrestling, doing that shit with my boys in high school, and then you know. I eventually, I found some like-minded individuals, started backyard wrestling, and then it kind of, you know, it, it domino effect from there. Because it's funny you say that because, I, I mean, I've had this conversation with Homicide whenever he comes on the show. We, we, we're from the same neighborhood and shit. And we, mm -hmm. we ran in the same circles. We knew the same people. He, he, he's actually, his, his, um, his first promotion, his first trainers and stuff, the, the, the father lived in my building. So I knew him from okay. there. And I always, I always said to him, it's like, Bro, where we came from, wrestling was not the first thing that we fucking would have been accepted for in the hood. Like, you know, nah, 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 we nah. was on a block. We had to either be shooting two things, nah. a basketball or a ratchet. Like, had to, oh, a gun. It was one of those two things. But, you know, yeah. how was it that you're, 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 since you said you, your friends would do it, was it just like you guys were fucking around because you knew you see WWE, the, you know, ECW, whatever, would just did it? Or you felt that that wrestling was going to be a calling for you? Uh, no, I mean, I've always been – um. Like you said, I just I, I, the class clown. It's a uh, it's funny. As much as uh, as much as a extrovert that I am, I'm very much an introvert too. So I'm kind of like I play both sides. And uh, I mean, I like being the center of attention, of course. Why wouldn't I? I wouldn't be a wrestler if I did it. But uh, I mean, it's fun to entertain people. I like to make people laugh. I like to you know have a good time. And uh, you know that 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 rush that you get from wrestling kind of filled that void. Well, uh, I guess. Uh, for me when I was younger because I, I went to a performing arts uh, junior high school for acting. Okay. And I did that. And that's kind of where I guess it, it started it, to, 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 you know, kind of perform for people and stuff like that. And then uh, the attitude ever was just hot. Everybody was talking about wrestling. It was a stone cold ever, the rock era, you know what I mean? So like wrestling was cool back then. So it wasn't like a thing to be frowned upon because like everybody was watching wrestling at that point. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then just, you know, I, I guess that was the escape for me and my boys, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what we did. And then just starting to do it with them for fun and just, you know, steamrolled and yeah, I just, uh, it's like a drug, man. Once it takes hold and it, it's hard to let it go. In case you guys don't know by now, I already have it up. It's, I got, I got one half of LAX, multiple tag team champions all across the country, across, all across the planet. Ortiz is in the building. He's the one, like I said, he's the sexiest one out of the two. I don't care what nobody tells me. 
I, I, I agree. If, I agree. I believe me. If if there was one that I would I would whistle for, it would be for Ortiz. I just want to say that. But I'm, I'm a straight man. But I'm just saying that from the heart. I, I have I to appreciate say, you. <laughs> and it's funny because you said that. I I too it, it's a, I too had had that whole ambition as well to uh, be in theater. I did theater and in, in, in junior high school and, and high school. And it's another thing from the block that a lot of people don't sit there and recognize is like. The fuck you doing with this shit? Like it, it doesn't coincide with our culture, with our livelihoods and area. But we're the ones that always do the counterculture and seem to break out and actually have people who gravitate to us. When guys started seeing you more often, the guys on the neighborhood uh, started seeing that you was gonna take wrestling serious. What was their first thoughts about that? Um, I mean, mixed. I people th- throughout are pretty much Santana would be the same way throughout our whole lives. A lot of people don't get it. I mean, if they, if they're wrestling fans, then they're like excited. You know what I mean? They're like, "What you do? What?" And you'll kind of get like a really good reception. But when you when you get like, I would say a casual fan or someone that doesn't even really watch it. I mean, from different walks of life, they they don't get it. Like they think it's cool, but it's just like, why do you hurt yourself for no reason? You get very mixed reviews, and then of course people say that fake stuff, which is a derogatory term for wrestlers because, um, man, every time someone says that, you want to be like, man, take, take a walk in my shoes and see how I feel every day. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff. But, I, uh, yeah, man, uh, it's very, it, it was very mixed at first. I, I don't think, uh, honestly, up until recently that I've gotten a, a, a large, um, what I'm looking for. A swell of a fan base because of the success that you guys have been on a, on a roll in the past two years. It's been one. It's been wild. It's been yeah. wild. Like I tell you, I, I I remember early on in EYFBO Team Pazuzu early on, um when when you guys would come in and you were opening or or, or mid card matches and then all of a sudden there was a a groundswell of people who who started taking notice. And then, you know, you had the Kingston's who started backing you. Then Dickerson, uh, you, you got our boy, San, uh, Pinky, who's been, who's been on the show as well. And then of course you got the backing of homicide Hernandez and all this, and everything just started rolling and clicking and clicking for mm-hmm. me. I'd have been bugging like for real. I'd have been like, yo, where the fuck is this shit coming from? For real. How is it that you've been able to maintain such a, a, a good role and, and a nice, uh, a humble humility, if that's a word, a humble uh, 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 personality about what's going on these days. Um, I mean, I, I just uh, I, both Santana and I just believe in just being good human beings. When you're a good human being and you kind of put up a positive energy out into the universe, that's kind of what you get back. When you're negative and you focus on negativity, that's kind of what you surround yourself with. And um, man, I mean, we just. We, we we want to be the best. We say it a lot, and I know it's something that a lot of people say, uh, but that's always been our deal, that we want to be the best. We want to work everywhere. And in order to work everywhere, you kind of need people to like you. <laughs> or you have to be extremely talented uh, and hard for people to say no and not to book you. But um, I just think being a good person – you get a uh, good, good, good and positive vibes back, and that's just kind of how we lived our life. And also, always strive to have the best match on the card, man. I mean, very rarely do you see us phone it in, if at all. You know what I mean? We always try to put out our best foot effort, um, our best effort, and our uh, best foot forward is what I meant. But uh, yeah, man, I, I, it just kind of steamrolled every opportunity we got. We took it, and we were like, all right, how can we get? How can we get? take this opportunity to make another opportunity out of this and keep climbing and keep climbing and keep climbing. And uh, Impact uh, gave us the call and it kind of steamrolled for there. Once we wanted Impact, we were like, all right, now that we're on TV, we need to use the exposure to get booked for every top indie promotion, which is what we did. And then, you know, take that and then what's the next step and what's the next step. We're always looking to what's the next step and how to take it and elevate it. Well, you got, you got that's, you it's got like, to our success, honestly. Yeah, you got you got one of the biggest uh, thumbs up from the man himself, Conan, who who basically uh, he he saw you guys and, and was like, "Yo, we could put a rocket on these guys," and these guys are actually moved that tag team division up the card and impact. But I also see that 100%. there's more to he, that he too. Saw it very guys. early on. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. And when you like, what what's been like key in uh, let's say. Uh, tools key 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 um 
words of knowledge or wisdom that you've gotten from Conan these past couple of years? Um, the one that always sticks out, uh, that um, he's always told us and he's reiterated a couple of times was um, uh, it's a story that he uh, he brings up with uh, he always uses this story with Eddie Guerrero and um, Ed, when uh, the um, Latino heat gimmick was first brought to him mm-hmm. uh, Eddie didn't want to do it and he was talking to Conan about it and um, Conan was just like listen man if they uh if they give you chicken shit, you make chicken salad. You right. know what I mean? It's lemon make lemonade. You you make the best out of the, a shitty situation. Like you be the best at it. You hit a home run, even if you don't want to do it. Because it shows versatility and it shows that you can do anything. That's what is gonna, you know, give you longevity in wrestling. That's what's gonna make you the most money, man. And if you think about it, Eddie Guerrero's like one of his most iconic runs is Latino Heat, man. The stuff that he was doing is Latino Heat was amazing. And uh, and he, you know, he wanted to be the serious wrestler because that's what Eddie Guerrero was. He was a badass, and he didn't want to do the comical stuff. But then he was so good at it. And uh, yeah, I I think that that was probably the best advice. I mean, there's there's a, a mountain load of advice that he's always given us. He's always spending knowledge like every single time. It never stops. Like he'll always nitpick. We'll be sitting in the back at Impact watching a match, and he's like, "Why didn't that work?" You know what I mean? He'll ask me questions, and he'll be like. What would you have done differently, Dan? And then he'll just always be spending you. And it's great, man. It's just being on his learning tree. All right, guys. You guys only got this much time to be on this aspect of the Facebook Live because you're not getting the rest of this shit for free. You're going to download and stream the rest of this on Turbo Tabloid when, when the episode comes out. You guys have been cool on this aspect. Ortiz and I are still going to talk. You guys are going to download and stream this episode when it comes on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, wherever the fuck podcasts come from. That's where we at at Turnbuckle Tablet. So on this stream on Facebook, we out of here. Laters.